welcome to Independent VFX. In today's tutorial, we'll look at improving your compositing skills with aerial explosions that comes as part of Flight Kit with the Jet Strike Pack. So let's take a look. Here's the shot we are going to look at doing. Right, so let's take a look at what we have in After Effects. I've got a composition here made up of two layers. The base layer is an aerial photograph that comes with Jet Strike. Um, it's the one called Aerial 02, which can be found in the Resources folder. And then on top of that, I've got a QuickTime, I've got Aerial Explosion 01 that comes with Flight Kit as part of your Aerial Explosions pack. So let's just do a RAM preview of this. I haven't touched these clips. All I've done is put one on top of the other in an HD composition. That shows you what you're getting just by default. So not bad looking at all, but uh, the explosion is perhaps a little bit dark for the scene. Um, and also, you know, it feels like it's all in slow motion. Uh, it doesn't kind of have any kinetic energy in the blast. So let's look at improving that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my aerial explosion and I'm going to pre-compose it. So layer, pre-compose, move all of it into the new composition. And I'm going to access this new composition and I'm just going to call it, let's just call this explosion retime. Right, now what I want to do is I want to scrub forward in time. Here we go to where the explosion kind of, you can see in this front section, it's a big fireball. And then as we go further, it starts to blacken and become a smoke cloud. So somewhere in between the two of those in this sort of transitional area here, probably around there or here, I want to split that layer. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut, which on Apple is Shift, Apple D. Um, you could do that through the layer menu though. And what I want to do now is this front section, I want to really ramp it and speed it up to be really quick. So I'm going to say layer, time, time stretch. And I'm going to speed that up a lot to sort of 12.5% of its original speed. You can see there what's happened. And then the second part of the explosion, I also want to ramp, apply layer, time, time stretch stretch it to half its original speed or double its original speed and then I'm just going to sort of scoot this up so that it seamlessly joins again so so if I go back to my explosion in the sky comp and I ram preview it here you can see what you're getting so what I want to do as well now just to give this whole composition a bit more life I'm going to quickly switch off my aerial explosion. I'm going to select my bottom layer, which is this aerial JPEG, and I'm going to just zoom out a bit. I'm going to apply the corner pin effect to this. So effect distort corner pin. So what I'm going to do now is I'm only going to manipulate these bottom pins. So I'll come to my effects down here, corner pin, open that up, and I want to create a keyframe for lower left and lower right at the start of my comp. And then what I want to do is the bottom left pin, I want to drag a little bit to the left. Then I'm going to scrub to the end of my comp. I'm going to grab the lower left pin and I'm going to just drag it back to where it belonged originally. Then I'm going to grab the lower right pin and drag it to the right. And now if I do a RAM preview of this, and there you can see what we're getting. You start to get the appearance or the illusion that we are traveling through the sky and the foreground is just moving slightly faster than the background, which kind of gives the illusion of depth. Right, so I'm going to switch my aerial explosion back on. If I just scrub, you can see there it is. What I'm going to do now is just give it a second or so before the explosion happens. So let's say the explosion can start at about a second and a half. So We'll see a bit of sky, followed by our explosion detonating in the sky. Um, and what I'm going to do as well is I just want the explosion to kind of travel with us, this kind of fake camera move I've set up. So I'll open up the position properties for the explosion and just create a keyframe here at the start, scrub to the end, and I'll just drag my explosion to the right a little bit. Great, so there you can see what we're getting. 
Now, the next thing I want to do to start making my explosion look more integrated into the shot is I want to change its transfer mode here to hard light. Immediately you can see what that does. It, it just sort of takes the edge off um, our explosion and tends to already make it feel just a little more integrated. Um, you'll notice now though that we are seeing the background through the explosion. That's something we'll come and correct right at the end. Um, but let's move on with getting our explosion to look integrated. So the next step to make this explosion look good is to duplicate this layer. Duplicate and then look for the fill effect in your effects and presets. You can just type in fill. There it is, generate fill, and I'll drag that and drop that on our top instance of the explosion. By default, it fills it with red. Now, what you want to do is you want to change this top layer's transfer mode to either add or screen. You can use either. I'll go with add. And then use the color picker in the fill effect here and choose a blue that kind of dominates your background. So I'll, in this example, I want to pick probably this mid-gray blue that exists here something like that and then you want to open up the opacity properties for this top layer or the top instance of the explosion and you want to take its opacity right down to around probably 10 or 15 percent say 10 percent um, and just looking at this color that i picked i might want to just click on it and work a bit more blue into it here something like that Right, so there you can see the explosion is already starting to look a lot more integrated into the shot. Uh, it feels more like it's being lit by that scene. What I want to do next is I want to make this first part of the explosion a lot brighter and hotter because uh, I feel it's a little bit too kind of contained and we're seeing a lot of detail in that fire. Um, so I'd like to make it a whole lot brighter and hotter. So what I'm going to do is just move to this section. Um, I'm going to click on that layer. Let me just scrub forward to where it starts to become more smoke than fire, so somewhere there. I'm going to apply levels, effect, color correct, levels, and I will just create a, let's just drag this out. I will create a keyframe there. Then I'll scrub back to where the, the uh, explosion is mostly fireball, sort of here. And now I want to ramp up these highlights, so I will pull my highlights to the left, something like that. And maybe I'll even lift my blacks a little to be something more like that. Let's just back time a bit. So there you can see the explosion is, if I just put this levels uh, preview on and off, you can see our explosion there, much hotter now at this front part of the explosion. And then it slowly kind of ramps back to where it was by the time we get to the smoke cloud. Right, so next I want to apply a glow effect to this explosion. So I will just search for glow in the panel here. There it is, stylized glow, and I'll drop that below the levels in the effects palette. Right, so you really need to just play with the glow settings until they feel right, but you want to you want to fiddle with them until you end up with this kind of effect where this hot, bright part of the explosion up front is very blown out and glowy. This section, only the hot bits get the glow and towards the end, there's no glow. So for me, settings that worked here was a glow threshold of 45%, a glow radius of 150 pixels and a glow intensity of 0.9. And then I used my own um, color map with those colors as my A and B colors. So let's do a RAM preview of this. Right, so there you can see what we're getting. Right, so the last step is to come along and fix the explosion so that we don't see the background through it. We want this explosion to feel solid and at the moment we're seeing our background right through it. What you want to do is take your background layer, duplicate it, apply a blur to it, just use blur, fast blur, and you're going to turn this right up. You want it to be probably around 150 pixels and the background image just starts to feel like blurry color. Um, you can already see now the explosion. You don't see any detail through it now because the image you're seeing through it is blurred. 
So what we want to do is this blurred version of our background, we just need a mat so that it only appears where the explosion is. So what we'll do is we'll take our explosion retimed, we'll just duplicate it, we'll put it to just above our out of focus background, I'll hide it, and then I'll tell this out of focus background layer to use that explosion as an alpha mat. And there we go. So now we have our explosion looking nicely lit and integrated into the scene. And if I just sort of scrub through this gently, I'm no longer feeling like I'm seeing the background through the explosion. The explosion now feels like a solid object. Right, there you go, and you can see what we're getting. So I think, you know, with those few simple tweaks, you're getting an explosion that looks a lot more realistic in the way it behaves and in the way it looks. If we just do a quick before and after comparison, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So here's the original aerial explosion just uh, dropped onto the animating background. You can see it looks very dark. Uh, the motion doesn't feel quite right versus the explosion we've just created which kind of has a lot more kinetic energy up front, a lot more uh, brightness in the blast, and the motion tends to feel a lot more real-time and realistic. Great, so thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and stay updated. We'll be covering lots of other Jetstrike-related tutorials soon. I'm Scott Newman. Cheers.